Welcome to my Linux desktop. This is actually the i3 window manager with the poly bar as the top bar. The terminal is a termite terminal. Let me run a quick new fetch so that you can get details of my computer. And from that, let me explain to you my workflow with this computer and why I personally feel a Linux or to be more accurate, the i3 window manager in Linux makes me super efficient whenever I do anything. First of all, let's talk about the workspaces. The three things that you see here in the top are workspaces. Now, I have added icons to make them easier to understand. And I actually have a second monitor to the left of this one. where So I have two different workspaces. And on my secondary monitor, right now I have all the recording software going so that I can check if the recording is going properly but let's let me demonstrate what workspaces are for those who aren't familiar even though windows has this it doesn't have something as refined as this now we are currently in what i call my general workspace you can see it with the yellow underline underneath now if i hit windows key e that takes me to my explorer or my browser that's my browser workspace and you can see now the Google um, uh, workspace has been selected you can click on it it says WhatsApp because this is all of my uh, social media and things that I usually don't close this is Rambox an application which is meant for that and this is my uh, Google workspace where I have browsers and whenever I open my brave browser it by default opens in this workspace let me demonstrate that now we are in what I call my terminal workspace where I open my terminals and um, let me very quickly open brave so I do a control C that opens my apps mode you can see here and then if I hit B and you can see that this turned red so if I go to that workspace you can see there's a secondary uh, thing that's opened now talking about workspaces this is what workspaces are you can have something set up here like for example I'll have two terminals here and uh, a web browser here and let me very quickly pull back my agenda from there so and let's say my file manager here now what I can do is I can switch very quickly between these workspaces you can see in the top where it's switching between these workspaces so the, the test uh, excuse me my Tunar folder, the folder, file explorer, my terminals, my um, chat applications, and here usually I have my music applications running. Um, if I very quickly bring my eighth workspace here, you can see this is my recording software. So since you workspaces are basically like different desktops, which you can put specific things on and go back to those specific things with very quick access. I can either use my keyboard, I use which I rely on heavily, or I can click on these. So you can see that these are different desktops, which if I click on, it takes me to those specific desktops. Now, let me close down these things and let me close this too. Now, let me explain that that's workspaces. Let me now explain to you about why i3 i3 is a tiling window manager what a tiling window manager implies is basically if i open a window you can see that there's no close buttons there's no border around the window there's no minimize in when um, tiling window managers there's no concept of minimizing an application it's either open or it's closed if you want a fresh desktop you just go to a different workspace you don't ever have the capacity to minimize a window it's always open tiling window managers are good because you don't have to meddle with the window with your mouse the concept of tiling window managers is useful for people who don't want to lift their hands off their keyboard move on to their mouse then set up the window when i open i hit windows key enter or super key enter for my terminal whenever i do that as soon as the windows open it scales it to the entire size and if i open a secondary window 
it gives half it gives half of each a third window gives one third of each now let's say i don't want it to open it to the right i want to open it underneath I hit windows key w i mean windows key v and then if i hit enter then it opens it underneath vertically i hit windows key v again it cuts that in half now if i hit windows key b which is a setting that i have set it opens it to the right and do you see how i don't have to touch any of these terminals now if i wanted to resize them i would hit windows key y which on the top right corner you see, you see this resize mode enabled and then i would just expand or uh, shrink with my either arrow keys or if you are used to vim then i'm actually using windows key uh, i mean h and l to control the size of the window and when i'm done i can just hit windows key y again that gets rid of resize mode now let's say i wanted to code something i would just hit windows key c which opens my apps mode now to you this might not seem like a menu and you might not see any options but it is actually my own menu if i hit b it opens my browser if i hit t it opens my tuner if i hit um, if i hit let's say r it opens ram box if i hit f it opens firefox and so on and so forth i have all these applications that i generally use like a file manager is so commonly used that i have it set as a shortcut since it makes my life easier to open something like that now let's say i don't have a shortcut like for example audacity is something that i use i don't have a shortcut set for i would hit windows key f and then type aud and then i would just select audacity here do you see how so far i haven't used my mouse that is the idea of a tiling window manager you don't want to take your hands off the keyboard onto the mouse pointing and clicking pointing and clicking is slower than just using a keyboard now your questions might be like it's now i'm using like uh, let me open something else do you see on the top here it tells me which window is in focus so uh, i have this on both screens and it, if you look at this it says file manager now if i hit windows key h it shifts focus to the left one windows key l to the right one that's vim bindings you can also use windows key left and right arrow keys to change focus uh, you can actually see the very subtle difference in the text of the um, file manager and the cursor is also blinking when i have the terminal selected so this is how you would change focus between the terminals and the different windows that are there you don't use your mouse that's one of the main things i cannot emphasize this enough of tiling window managers now let me just take a very quick look at i had written down points to the advantages of linux so let's just look at that let me close this and oh very quick for me to close an application windows key shift q and another important thing all of these are the sp set by you you set the shortcuts you set what opens when you set the different modes the apps mode the oh this is another one terminate mode where i either lock my screen or shut my screen down all of that you set it you script it you have you can set it the way you want this is my cpu usage my ram usage my battery and the date if i click on this it shows me the expanded version of the date i actually have a um something called a, a system tray but that system tray is on a different screen it's on my second it's on my primary monitor and i'm recording my secondary monitor so advantage is the terminal it's uh, something you i can't explain automation workspaces control control is what i'm talking about here when i say i can do it the way i want to do it and oh uh, another important thing i'd like to say is just because i don't have something called a floating window manager doesn't mean i cannot have floating windows if i hit windows key space this is actually a floating window as you can see i can hold alt and um, uh, i can hold alt and windows and i can move my terminal around like let me close this so that i can make it more clear right so 
windows alt and windows moves it around it's actually like a floating window and then i can resize it move it around maybe you know open another terminal put that into floating mode put these two but you if you use a tiling window manager very rarely you'll use these floating windows these will be like the subtle the small pop-ups that you get asking you are you sure you want to close this application those are those floating windows because it doesn't make sense to have uh, those small pop-ups to take up half the screen or a certain portion of the screen so they come up as floating windows since they require attention immediately and you can uh, you can set your workspaces to open the way you want and whenever i code i code in a specific workspace you can see when i open the code editor it opens there i'm not going to go there because i have some code open there but in that workspace is where i would have my code editor and uh, let me i can actually so this is my code editor i use vs code i actually use vs code in something called vim mode where i control my arrow keys using the jkl and thing and uh, you by default workspaces are configured to your number keys so like windows key one opens the first workspace windows key two opens the second workspace in linux we call it as the super key but i'm assuming that the people watching this don't know what the super key is so windows key is the super key but i have configured it so that uh, i have there's something called the home row where you rest your fingers when you're typing so i have all my workspaces right above my home row to make it easy and you can see that my um the brave right that workspace then your terminal workspace your this workspace and your music workspace i hope you understood what i was trying to show you i hope you understood why this increases efficiency since you don't have to use the mouse since you know like i know that if i hit windows key e i will be presented with my browser i know if i hit windows key u i will be presented with my code editor and i know how everything is i know the shortcuts i don't have to think so whenever i'm coding i just hit windows key c and then come to this workspace to my coding very quickly go back refer to my browser go back to coding then to test it i go to my terminal windows key enter do my testing here so like python and then run my tests here it's just it's a workflow and it's becomes muscle memory that you don't have to think about it like i whenever i open windows key e, i'm not thinking oh windows key e is my browser it's just there I, I i just it's there in my muscle memory and that's why if you stay in one place it's easier and windows key uh, shift q closes applications i know that like for example open a terminal close a terminal it's that simple i don't have to use my mouse and if you notice my mouse during this entire recording you would see that it doesn't move at all and why i avoid the mouse is because you have to lift your hands off the keyboard come to the mouse point at something click on it which i know seems like oh my god that's so lazy that you don't want to do that no it takes time to do that and when you're trying to be efficient and when you're trying to concentrate on thinking about what to do like when i'm coding i'm trying to think of what i'm trying to solve the problem that i'm sol trying to solve so i don't want to have to use my brain to think about anything else windows key e browser windows key this terminal uh, i mean uh, the code and this the terminal i don't think i just know it's there in my muscle memory which is a huge advantage compared to um having to click on something or having to go through a menu to find something it's it's just a lot more work or distractions these those windows and floating window managers i find it distracting and taking you away from what you're trying to do with your computer i feel this gives me complete control over my computer and i use it for the purpose that i'm trying to achieve more than trying to use the operating system the operating system is not something i'm concerned about not it's it's just there in the background i'm not trying i'm not focusing or i'm not using my brain to be like oh i have to place this window there that window there it's just it's, it's just there that i know and you can see the workspace is open if it's not if i come here i don't see my code editor then i just open it with the windows key c c for vs code um, very quickly let me just show you the last thing whenever i open code editor it also goes to that specific workspace since 
I don't open my code editor in any other workspace. I hope that you would try Linux after looking at this video. I hope that it's shown you my workflow and maybe how you could design your workflow. Um, I will put the advantages and disadvantages of Linux in the description. And if you go to my GitHub repository at um, GitHub slash switches reader, then you will also find the configuration files for this specific um, i3 window manager issue. You got config slash i3. You'll see the entire script. Actually, let me just very quickly show you the script. Uh, nvim is my code editor of choice whenever I'm doing something that's uh, simple. Dot config i3 config and this is my this is where you set up your computer it is you see here this is this is all the workspaces this entire region is the workspaces and uh, here is the resize you you configure it like this it might seem like oh you have to sit and type for you to just do simple tasks but it's this kind of a configuration if you write it firstly it's if you may if you do it once it's there for any time if you reinstall the computer you want it on a different computer no matter what it's there because it's just a text file that you have to copy and paste secondly it's just you can't go wrong like you can accidentally click on things you might not know where certain things are when you're dealing with a graphical user interface to configure your things but when you're typing you can't mistype something i mean you can but what i'm trying to say is when you're looking at it like bind sim mod plus one workspace number ws1 i know what that means it cannot mean anything else it's fixed but m clicking on something not necessarily it's fixed uh, i'm having a hard time explaining what i mean by that but just i prefer personally configuring anything with a configuration file rather than a um, what you call it um, a graphical user interface if I show you my config for the terminal it's also like this termite uh, leave config is yes, config this is where I configure the colors and the font a very small configuration uh, I should show you my bash aliases yes, that, that, that's another one uh, let me cat it out dot bash underscore alias this is my bash aliases this is again configuration for my um, files and you can see if I hit an LA it comes up all the files that are there when you start using the terminal start using workspaces start using a um, tiling window manager you will automatically see your productivity go up by a lot since now once you get used to it of course in the start it's going to take you time to learn how to um, set up your configuration file it's going to take you time to learn how to get used to this new method of having workspaces learn how to get used to the fact that you don't have closing maximizing or any of that kind you just have to use your keyboard and where even if you want to you you would not resize windows for the most part if either i want it this size or i want it on the max size i would i rarely have I've ever used this feature of resizing windows but if you do uh, the, p the point is that you have the option of resizing windows but i would for the most part i either use two or i use this i do not have more than three windows on one workspace if i want a fourth window i usually open it in a another workspace very i've never had a situation where i want more than two windows or three windows in a workspace i hope this encourages you to try linux try a window if you using linux then i would suggest using a tiling window manager if you're using a tiling window manager then i would suggest using um things like nvim and your default vim key bindings since those make you even high it increases your productivity even further That'll be all from me. I hope you learned something from this. Bye-bye.